UC Sports is back in action. As per usual, it's been a busy fall season here at UConn. I'm Noam Watt, alongside Julia Gintoff, happy to bring you another episode of UC Sports. Coming up next, we'll discuss a major change at the quarterback position for UConn football. Plus, we were at all eight fall home games here on campus this past weekend. Lastly, we'll take a quick look at basketball season for the Huskies with just 50 days left until the season. And we'll make our semester debut of the Husky High Five. Stick with us, UC Sports starts right now. It's been a rocky start to the UConn football season. Head coach Randy Edsel was canned after two games. They started three quarterbacks in four games, and they've gotten out to deficits of 45-zip, 49-zip, and 42-zip to their three FBS opponents. Yet, despair and agony aside, the Huskies offered hope for the future in the second half against Army on Saturday. Freshman quarterback and Connecticut native Tyler Pumachan made his Husky debut, rushing for two touchdowns against Army. Brian Bruton also returned to kickoff for a touchdown, the first one for the Huskies since the 2011 Fiesta Bowl. Crazy that the Huskies were in a BCS Bowl, but such is the truth. And yet, the Huskies fell to 0-4 on the season in a 52-21 loss to Army. But for me personally, being there at West Point was an experience I will never forget. The historic venue, the pregame ceremonies with cadets marching over the field, helicopter flyovers and paratroopers jumping into the stadium. And just the historic venue of Mikey Stadium was truly a one-of-a-kind experience and a great place to watch a college football game despite the UConn loss. After shutting out Syracuse with a 3-0 win at home last Sunday, the women's soccer team could not maintain a streak as they stumbled over the weekend against Buffalo. With 11 shots on goal, the Husky offense just could not find the back of the net as the Bulls took that one 2-0. With a 4-3 record on the season, they'll begin Big East play on Thursday against St. John's at home. On the men's side, the Huskies went 2-1 over the past week, easily handling Ivy League opponents Yale and Dartmouth. Sophomore Jaden Reed led the offensive effort with three assists and a goal against the Bulldogs, landing him a spot on the Big East weekly honor roll. Musa Wade would keep UConn on top as well with the sole goal against the Big Green. They'll travel to Chicago over the weekend, looking to maintain a strong start as they open conference play against DePaul. UConn field hockey had a huge weekend here at home playing in the George J. Sherman Family Sports Complex field. On Friday, the Huskies beat number 19 Old Dominion 2-zip behind goals from Claire Yandever and a nifty weak angle goal scored by McKenna Sergi. Then on Sunday, UConn followed it up and moved their record to 500 on the season with a shootout victory over number 13 Harvard. Abby Gooderham and I.E. Young scored for the Huskies while Cheyenne Sprecher came up clutch. We'll see more of her later, stopping four or five shots in the shootout. UConn goes on the road this weekend to play two more ranked opponents. First, Liberty, and then the defending national champion, North Carolina Tar, Heel Tar Heels, to close out the weekend. Volleyball took home the Dog Pound Challenge as senior Kaylee Parker recorded her thousandth kill. Yes, that's thousandth. Huge milestone for Parker as the Huskies easily swept Bryant and NJIT, while also taking down Yale three sets to one. Junior Allie Garland was named MVP of the tournament, recording 25 kills over the weekend. Jasmine Davis and Michaela Wench would secure tournament team spots as well. The Huskies will have back-to-back -back Big East matchups on Friday and Saturday as they look to have improved on an 8-4 record. On Sunday, the UConn softball team kicked off their fall ball season in a 10 exhibition game against Boston College. Our Cole Steffen was there and he has the report. The UConn Huskies softball team took on the Boston College Eagles, looking to start their fall ball season off right. The powerful lineup got going early and often, putting up three runs in the first and two runs in the second, with the bases loaded several times. Despite a four-run frame from the Eagles in the top of the third, the Huskies were able to add two more runs of their own to extend their lead to 7-4. Megan O'Neill started this game and had a solid performance over four innings with several strikeouts to boot. The star player today was Reese Guevara, who went 3-for-3 three three with a home run and two singles, and a walk. Brianna Marcelino had the best play of the game when she made a diving catch in the infield and successfully turned the double play. Her defensive efforts helped prevent Boston College from scoring more than four runs. A sacrifice fly in the fifth inning helped seal the deal as the Husky defense and bullpen secured the 8-4 win. The Huskies will continue their fall ball season when they travel to Adelphi University on Saturday, September 25th in Garden City, New York. From Burrill Family Field, this is Cole Steffen, 
UCTV Sports. Hockey is back. The women's team opening it up in a series against Long Island University this weekend. The men's squad will take it to the XL Center on October 2nd, where they will face fellow Connecticut foe Sacred Heart. Now on to Noam with the Husky High Five. At number five, Connecticut native Tyler Pumachan scampers 38 yards for a touchdown in his first career start. The Huskies would end up falling 52-21 to Army, but Pumachan's future with UConn looks bright. Moving to number four, it's Dominic Laws, UConn men's soccer, who buries the header. Top corner off the feed from Jaden Reed. UConn men's soccer would beat Yale for zip. They're off to a good start. At number three, Cheyenne Sprecher, UConn field hockey goalie, seals the victory with a huge save in the penalty shootout. Huskies beat two ranked opponents on the weekend. Checking in at number two, it's Kaylee Parker, who continues her illustrious career with her 1,000th kill right here, part of a weekend sweep for the volleyball team. And our number one play this week comes from Burl Family Field. Look at that catch from Brianna Marcelino, where she lays out and doubles off the runner in one smooth motion. One more look at this play. UConn beats BC in a fall ball exhibition. Is it ever too early to talk Huskies basketball? We're here with Big East Hoops junkie himself, John Fanta, to hopefully hash out some predictions for the upcoming season. All right, John, first of all, thank you for being mm -hmm. here. UConn is headed into their second season in the conference, but this time without their star, James Booknight. Is there anyone you could see from last year's squad, maybe who's not going to be a lottery pick this year, but someone you could see emerging as that role player leader for the team? Well, I think that R.J. Cole is in position to be one of the leaders of this team. When you are in the point guard spot, you've got to stir the drink for everybody else. So is anyone going to score to the degree that James Booknight was scoring at? I don't know about that. I would probably say the answer is no. He was a generational talent. He's an NBA draft lottery pick. So it's only a natural question that you say, who is going to fill that scoring void? I think right now the answer is by committee, that it could be Tyrese Martin one night. It could be an Andre Jackson, who I think is a big key to this season. Can he stay healthy? He certainly presents the explosiveness. If it's in a cook a cook who breaks out, can he stay healthy? It's another guy that, that I think is interesting to the equation. And then when you do have a veteran point guard, which is why I started the answer with Cole, can R.J. Cole make it easy for four-star freshmen to come in and off the catch, do what you're supposed to do off the catch, get open shots, and make those open shots? So I'm interested to see what a Jordan Hawkins brings to the table, what a Russell Dickens brings to the table, and, and then the big man Samson Johnson as well as well as Corey Floyd, I think that this recruiting class could benefit from the veteran star power that UConn has coming back. But is there an alpha? That is the key question here in stores. Now, John, when you look at a Dan Hurley coach team, a hallmark is always, always, always going to be their defense and their toughness. And this is something that you've talked about time and time again with UConn is their defensive presence. Co Big East player of the year last year, Isaiah Whaley, along with a Cook, a Cook who was blocking everything in sight his freshman year, and Adama Sanogo who really turned up his defensive intensity towards the end of last season. How far can UConn's defense take them if their offense doesn't necessarily catch up until mid or late season? Well, it's going to keep them in every game, and that's the biggest thing is if UConn defends and rebounds the way they're capable of, then it's going to be very difficult to blow them out because they're consistently getting extra opportunities. I think Tyrese Martin is an underrated offensive rebounder. He was actually in the top six in the Big East last year in offensive rebounding. But when you defend and rebound the way that Dan Hurley's Huskies do, you are going to hang in. It's what you hang your hats on. But at some point, you're going to have to effectively and efficiently get to 65 points. In November and December, I agree, in December, I agree with you in that I think that UConn will be able to hang in and beat teams that aren't all the way there on those ends of the floor. But in a first to 60 or first to 65 type of game, which is what you're going to have to do to beat the Huskies, it's going to be a rock fight. It's going to be a war, which is why UConn and the Big East just fit each other. UConn is going to have to, in the final two, three minutes of those Big East games, who is going to be the one taking those key shots and what kind of looks are they getting at? Now, I'm going to twist things for a moment on this team. Everybody's talking about the loss of James Booknight and how it affects the offense. 
Sometimes when you lose a player as good as him, it forces everybody to come together and play as a team. And that's something we saw last year when he went oh, out with yeah. injury. Exactly. This team has experience doing it. They came back at Marquette. They won at Butler. They had a couple of other wins along the way in which it didn't have to be one guy late in a game. So by sometimes evolving that snake, even though they don't have the head of the snake, UConn might actually not benefit, but just be different. And different might be okay for a Dan Hurley coach team. Mm. You talked a little about Andre Jackson, him possibly emerging as a key player. I know last year he looked a little young. He had that awkward injury. What do you think we could see from him this year? I, I think you're going to see him blossom. And I think that anytime you come in as a freshman, and this is why I would urge those around the UConn Huskies program, you see the stars next to Diggins, to Hawkins, to, to this recruiting class, and, and you say to yourself, wow, big time. They're going to be ready to make an immediate impact. You never know. You never know with a freshman how he's going to handle this stage. And more times than not, it takes time to adjust. So you throw in the fact that Andre Jackson had to take that time to adjust after a situation in which, keep in mind, he was hurt, following a situation in which he did not have a normal offseason. Like, he wasn't able to get onto campus in June and train like he would every day. We were wearing masks. We were social distancing. There weren't the team workouts like you'd normally have, not to the degree that you'd have in a normal lead up to a season. That's such an important time for freshmen to get their feet under them. So he didn't have a normal lead up to the season. He then gets hurt and he's expected to be a main contributor for this program from the get-go. It wasn't in the cards. With a normal off season, with the coaching that Hurley's got on his staff, Andre Jackson showed in different bursts just how much of a matchup nightmare he can be. He plays modern day basketball in terms of being a wing who's lengthy, who's tough to guard. Can he shoot the basketball? That's my question. Can he shoot from the perimeter? If he can't, that's where it's hard for me to say, yeah, he's going to have a huge breakout, but he certainly will be better than he was last year. So now we're switching gears to the women's side. Women's side has a loaded non-conference schedule. Their Big East run probably will be a little bit easier than for the men's side. Plus, they have a certain number one recruit in the country coming to stores in AZ FUD, joining forces with Paige Beckers and senior veterans like Avina Westbrook, Kristen Williams, and Olivia Nelson Odota. John, it's been a while since the UConn women won the national championship. Are they the favorites this year? They're the favorites, and they are going to hoist a national championship trophy in Minneapolis next April, in my mind, for my money. The fact that Paige Beckers was as good as she was as a freshman, had the awareness that she did as a freshman, had the moxie that she did as a freshman, and now she gets to go into year two, and she knows what the prize is. And guess what the prize is? Hoisting a trophy in your home state. Like that, If that's not a driving force for a player, I don't know what is. She didn't need any driving force either. She's Paige Beckers. AZ Fudd comes in. All we've heard are great things. Cannot wait to see how they mesh. Paige has this incredible mentality in 2021 that if, if this makes sense, she reminds me of a throwback player in the degree of unselfishness and kind of that cool hand Luke mentality that nothing phases her, nothing rattles her. We live in a time of social media, NIL, where mental health is, is such a priority and, and it's something that, that frankly a lot of student athletes are dealing with. Paige Beckers has such a level head about her and plays the game so smoothly that you can just sense how much of a, a force that she is. What I look at, guys, is think about another year of Aaliyah Edwards and Olivia Nelson Adota together. Like, when you step on the floor against UConn, you have to worry about guarding Beckers and Fudd now, and you talked about Westbrook. But for me, where does UConn differentiate themselves against the best teams in the country? The fact that they have twin towers in Edwards and Nelson Adota who are like salt and pepper in the way they work together. Like, they, they just... Uh, they're a dynamic combination up the floor that makes quite the impact. So I look at UConn in the paint, and I look at the fact that Avina Westbrook is back, like you said, and I think that the Huskies will be more than ready for Big East play. They might have a slip-up in non-conference play. They might take a loss. They that, do have games on the road at South Carolina, at crazy. Oregon. I mean, their, their non-conference <laughs> schedule is ridiculous. Sure, and I would just urge, don't, don't overreact. Like, that's a good thing for them come March and April. It will be a good thing for them. This is the best team in the country.
So that's what we've got for right now with John Fanta, Big East Hoops guru. Probably be seeing some more content from him over the coming days, but thank you, John. We can't wait for basketball seasons under 50 days till our Huskies tip off. Great to have you here with us tonight. Cannot wait, and I can tell you right now, you guys at, at UCTV, you do great work. There is nothing I'm looking more forward to than walking into Gamble Pavilion filled up with fans. I've been waiting for this moment. All I've heard is it's a different atmosphere. Nothing I'm more excited for this season than that, and can't wait to see it with you guys. All right. Once again, a huge thank you to John Fanta for joining us tonight on our show. We are just as excited as he is for basketball season to start. For our entire production crew, as well as my co-host, Julia Gintoff, I'm Noah Watt. We'll see you next time on UC Sports.